Hello everyone. So in today's video, we'll see how we can write PHP units for our Magento 2 code. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here I've created a module called Mage Digest Cart Update. It's basically a GraphQL module uh, which will return a Boolean type response that is true or false. So if you see, if I come here to this particular uh, schema.graphql, so this is a simple cart. There's a field uh, that I've added. And now this field is having this particular resolver that is a model resolver, cart update resolver. So now what it will do, it will give me a uh, true or false response. So basically it will check the all the cart items. If any of the cart items is having uh, a product type of simple, it will return true. Otherwise it will return false. Okay. So this is what the code logic is. So I'm not going into details about this uh, implementation because the main motto is to how we can write the PHP unit for a, any piece of code. So now if this is my module, if you see it is under uh, Mage Digest Cart Update Model Resolver, and then I'm having this particular file, Cart Update Resolver. So for this particular file, we have to write the PHP unit. How we can do that? So for that, what we have to do? So first of all, what we have to do, we have to create a, a directory called test. Under test, we have to create a directory called unit. Underneath, we have to create a directory called model, then resolve. So up, uh, up till test slash unit, that is, this is the uh, directory which needs to be created. After that, whatever your path is for that particular file that you have to create over here. So if it is model resolver, then you have to create test unit model resolver. Okay. Now inside the model resolver, we have the cart update resolver. Similarly, inside the test unit model uh, resolver, we have to create a file called cart update resolver test. So we have to add this particular word called test. Okay. So cart update resolver test.php is my unit file, PHP unit file. Okay. So once that is created, what we have to do, we have to click on this particular file over here. This is a PHP unit test case where we are covering the code. So over here, if you see, this is the namespace that I've created. And this is the class that is the update resolver test. It is extending the test case. So this is what you have to uh, keep it in your mind. Okay. So it's a PHP unit framework test case. So it is extending this particular test case class. Okay. Now it's a resolver. If you see in the resolver main file, we have field, context, resolve info, array. That is a value and array arguments. Okay. So whatever values we are seeing over here, for that, we have to create a mock in our PHP file, okay? So if you see, uh, for all those classes that I have used in this particular main file, there is a field here and resolve info. So same thing, I have to create a mock for that. That is, see, if we have created a mock for this field mock, and I have created a mock called context mock. Okay. So what we can do, so whatever uh, field or classes we have, for all those classes, we have to create a mock. Now, if I click here, so what I can see from here, uh, the first code that is a cart value model. So we have to create a mock for this. And then from there, it is getting hit all items. Okay, this is what we have written in our code. Similarly, what we can do, we have, we have created a mock for the cart. Okay, so if you see, uh, there are two mocks related to quote and quote item. So this is the quote. If you see here, this is the quote mock. There is a cart. Okay, and there is another uh, mock is that is the quote item mock. Okay, and this field mock, context mock, and resolve info mock. This is coming from the main file. Field, context, resolve info. Right. So for that, this is a field mock, that is a field class. Um, there is context mock, there is a context interface class and resolve info mock, that is a resolve info class. Okay, now these three already is there in that particular resolver file. And what we have added from our code is that the cart and the uh, get all items. So this get all items will, will basically return you the cart item interface. So that we can see if you go to this particular class that is a cart get all items, you will see the return type. So whatever is the return type for that particular code, we have to create a mock for that. So for cart get all items, 
the return type is item cart item that is this class quote item okay so for that i have created a mock for that that is this one quote item mock okay so now if i scroll down so whatever we have done till here it is a mock we have created a mock for all the classes after that what we have done uh, whatever code we have written based on that we are writing this code there is a value so how we are getting this particular value uh, here there is a value we have a model that is basically the cart okay same thing we have written over here that is value we have created an array we have given a key called model and that is nothing but the code code means the cart that we have created over here okay so this is what we have done after that the second code is that cart get all items now this we are having we are um, putting in a variable called cart items so this is nothing but the quote item block so what we have written over here is that quote okay method get all items because this get all items is a method of this particular quote mock and what it will return it will return an array of quote item mock so that you have to make sure whatever method you are calling over here based on the return type you have to create a mock for that particular things so i know that get all item return, get all items will return a array of quote items so i have written like this so we'll return array inside array we have got quote item mock which is nothing but the quote item class okay so this is what we have covered after that since we have covered all the methods till here after that it is basically uh, doing going into a for loop and from there it is picking up this particular gate product type from the cart item so it will automatically since this is already uh, we have already mocked this particular class that is a quote item mock it is uh, it will automatically take care of that particular method that is a get product type by any chance if your code shows that the get product type is on null or something like that you have to create a mock for that as well for but for this particular code cart item uh, this cart item is the cart item mock that we have created this is calling this particular method called get product type and we have already created a mock for that quote item mock and from there it is automatically getting called now what we are doing we are calling the main that is a original resolver so what we have done over here okay so pre, uh, before that what we have to do i just forgot to mention here is that we have to create a method okay that is a setup method now this setup method will consist of all the uh, main classes and we have another method that is a test resolve return true for simple products in cart so this can be this is a name basically so whatever name you can give it is upon you so one method you have to create that is the setup and second is the main method where we are calling our main resolver class so inside the setup what you have to, what we have done over here is that we have created a mock that is a, this cart update resolver that is a this one that is our main class cart update resolver over here if you see maze digest cart update model resolver cart update resolver so now this is a object of this particular class so that we have defined here in our setup so there are many other ways how we can create a mock for a particular uh, class so if this is one method so if you google it google it out there are multiple ways of creating mock for a particular class so i have used this particular method you can also use it and some other cases also we will find that whatever mocks we have done we are creating those mocks in a in our setup method that also you can uh, use like whatever mocks i have created over here this this type of mocks i can write here okay in inside our setup that is i think that is what uh, i am trying to explain over here so once the setup method is done i have to create the next method that will cover our original code so whatever name you can give over here but you have to write test before that so whatever name you are giving just include the test keyword before that particular method so once that is done what we are doing over here uh, so till get all items i have covered now i am getting the result so where i am getting the result this is basically the original method that is original object that was calling from the quote up, uh, cart update resolver and then it is calling this resolve this that is this particular method that is the original class method okay so this is the object now this is calling this particular method that is the original class and from there we are passing this particular values okay this is the field this is the field mock over here if you see context mock that is given here resolver info mock this one 
and value this one and the arguments so arguments is basically null so whatever uh, arguments you see for this particular method so all those arguments needs to be like the mocks should be created for those arguments and once the mocks are created you just have to simply pass it over here so once you are doing this you are basically calling the original method and from there for each of the test cases there should be an assertion that should be included so in our case it's a assert is bool that is we have to, we are asserting uh, it's a boolean type of result so it will give a result either true or false that's why assert is bool so there are various types of assertion assert is array assert is null assert is number assert is equal so based on the logic we have to give the assertion but we have to make sure that whenever you are writing test cases we have to write the assertion part so once our test case is completed so what we can do we have to run we have to check whether the test case is successful or not so this is the command which i'll be sharing uh, in the description or in the comments so this is the command so what we have to do uh, you can just copy it from here so vendor bin php unit and till here coverage html reports this is basically it will give you a dashboard which will give you the how much covered how much code is covered okay now after that you have to give your model name so in my case it is app code mage digest card update so once you run this particular command it will run the php unit and it will give you okay one test and one assertion so it is if you see the green that means it is successfully completed in generate in the code coverage report in html format so once this is done you can able to see that particular dashboard so if you if you reload this particular uh, url so this is basically a url since i am using a wsl so this is basically a report dashboard if you see over here so all are green that means it is 100% covered so from here you will be able to understand till how much the code is covered and how much is left okay so now this particular html file where you can find it out just go to your uh, this one reports inside the reports you will find app okay inside the app uh, you can find code inside code you can get mage digest and then you'll find your own module okay so this is basically specific resolver cart update resolver dot php on html so once you find this file you can open it in your um, file explorer and then open it in google chrome so there is various ways you can do that okay if you open this file so this is the file that will get open this is from where you'll be able to find how much is covered or not okay so this is a simple uh, code that i've just uh, started uh, for writing your php unit so so whatever so one thing you have to make sure whatever classes that you find over here you have to create a mock for that and whatever is the return type for also that you have to create a mock for that so i'll try to create more videos on that if you uh, if you are interested in writing php units so that's all for today's video uh, if you have any queries you can write your comments um, i will try to get back to that okay. So see you in the next video. Thanks for your time.